Maybe make three different. That's exactly what I think you should do. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ye
Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> this is that's nice because normally when we're cooking, our dogs are like down here begging. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's like my dog. <laughs> they have to say you're not getting sugar and you're not getting cherries. So the first thing you do after you spray your pan and you turn your oven on to heat it up is you're going to get sugar and just take two tablespoons. That'll be your biggest one typically on your on your little thing of sugar and sprinkle it all inside the bottom of the pan, right? So just all over the bottom. Why do you why do you sprinkle oh, yeah, sugar at the bottom of the pan? Great question. I know. You do? Well, that's why put the spray. But that's stupid. No, oh, no, 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 good thought, but guess what comes next? Very, the very, 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 like when he had a similar idea, like, like for one of the recipes, like for instance, like for chocolate and crispy, like the one we did, like we're talking about for one that chick we did that Sharon did with us one time, which was kind of a quinoa. Mm -hmm. I'm not, not every recipe is a chocolate and fire, so it's sorry, like flour and stuff that sometimes yeah. after you spray it me, want to put a little bit on some like some powder for the flour stuff on it. Oh, on a cake. Yeah. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Both, like, when you have that idea, I you like, butter and you flour it, just like you said. For, for this break, when, you, when, you, when you had that thought, it's like different. It just reminded me. It yeah, yeah, that out. was a great, great memory. Thanks for calling. So yeah. this causes something different to happen because you're going to put the cherries on top of the sugar and it's going to go in the oven for 10 minutes while you're making the stuff that goes on top of it. Gonna make because you they're gonna make uh, uh cobbler kind of a little bit but almost in reverse because on the bottom oh so right. it's not a cobbler well yeah there's there's fruit and then there's nut then there's dough that goes for mixture that goes on top of it because when these cherries um when these cherries are in the are in the heat of the oven they'll release their juices and oh. combine with the sugar that's on the bottom of the pan once you get them all in, you can see the big chunky, chunky cherries. <laughs> so see, they're all in the pan. Oh wow. We're gonna oh. stick them in the oven for 10 minutes. <laughs> While that's in the oven, we're going to mix up the batter that goes on top of it. Okay. So the bowl. Thank you. And the cup measure, and then we're going to take the flour. Actually, give me the smaller bowl. Yep. That one we need for something else. Oopsie. Yeah. Wrong bowl. That's okay. It's time is coming. <laughs> so we put in one <laughs> cup of flour and a teaspoon of baking powder. Do you know what this is for? It helps make stuff puff up when you bake it. You add it, mix it in. You gotta be careful because there's also stuff called baking soda. Oh yeah. yeah. You don't want to use the wrong one. Okay, so. here's a funny story happening. So basically I made eight of this cake, which I actually made a recipe for, but one time I actually used like, yeah, the other type. I, oh, the uh, other one. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's it's bad, so I like throwing the trash. We've and all been there. Funny story. One time, I made my chest that to get chili powder in it, and I'm like, okay, this is going down now. We've all screwed up on this stuff with different like. So we put the teaspoon of the baking powder, not soda powder, in the flour. <laughs> And then you're going to need just a pinch of salt so to shake out a very little bit. It's not even enough to measure in one of those spoons. And I need these. I do you know they make the measuring spoons that actually say pinch. Mm -hmm. or there are some in. little itsy bitsy. Yeah, yeah they're tiny. I've tiny. got a set of them. And then we need <laughs> eggs. Oh, yeah. Yep. Sorry. That's okay. I'm a little, you guys, I'm so sorry. I normally let you look prepared. <laughs> I'm Dawn. I'm Eric. How are you? This has been one of those days for me. So That's okay. So it's part of the fun. Oh, you forgot me. 
No, now we can well, at least we're getting them in the in the cake. That's the most important part. Better. Oh, that's it. Hey, Sharon, have yeah. you ever used any other type of eggs besides chicken eggs before? <laughs> Oh God! Don't use not chicken eggs. Yeah, don't use not chicken eggs. <laughs> I've cooked with duck eggs. Yeah, yeah they're really good. And I've had um, quail. Quail. quail eggs. You can find some places. Some some. Uh, my brother once had an ostrich egg omelet. I said it was awesome. He said it was really good. I've never tried. I've finally tried ostrich eggs. So what the duck eggs? Like a chainsaw to get that. They taste like eggs. They're not that much different. They're just. You're just the same as chicken egg. Yeah, except I haven't had the quail eggs before. They taste good. good. Well, it's good. Really? Yeah. What? So if you go to like really, some like like mine. really <laughs> traditional sushi places, like Japanese places, there's this thing where they take a quail egg and they cut the egg, the shell off the top, and you're supposed to just drink the egg. Really? Yeah. Really? yeah. What do we like an egg shooter. The sugar. It went away. So what I tell people is I did a little too too early on <laughs> when I'm baking because sometimes I forget what I've done. I will, when I finish using an ingredient, I'll move it to the yeah, side eggs. so yeah. that I know. So you don't get confused use. and then go over it again. Exactly. And then I was a little too aggressive with my moving it because I forgot That's what okay. so many of the So we put three quarters of a cup sugar in there with the eggs. Like and last then time we do this. Hey guys, this is my ice not on my baking today. Don't no worry. If you want to use that, okay. I like that. You don't have it. Ah, gotcha. I do have one of those. They're very fun. These. My roommate has one of those. The big mixers. He, he's big, bigger. So. I make pizza dough. Yeah. My mom makes Ooh. some retarded bread. Have you made yeah. pizza dough before? Sure. I have, but I don't. I usually just buy the one at Trader Joe's. Everybody. My mom likes. Yeah. Like, from um, giant, uh, yeah, it's funny. I like to make so many things from scratch, and I really should make pizza dough because it's really oh. easy. Yeah, and you can freeze it, you can make up on Maybe we should do that sometime. Yeah, really except it's the frost okay. in the morning and just leave it out on your counter so it starts to have a little rise. Yeah, and you're ready to Sharon? do it after work. Maybe Sorry, I'm learning. Okay. Maybe we should do that <laughs> sometime. Make pizza dough. Oh, well, why don't we do that? Why don't we, we learn how to make pizza dough? Okay, so someone from Main Street, maybe we record, we'll make pizza dough. Make pizza dough. That's great. And we did make bread over, um, remember we did that New York style um, oh, yeah. sourdough? Yeah. So remember in the, in the I call it the cuisinart, but it's not the cuisinart. The the what is that called? Like the pot? All right. Remember we made that? It was so good. I don't, I don't think I was there for that. I don't think I was there for that. Maybe, 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 maybe it needs to have. Maybe I missed it. Yeah, I think I missed it. So that's mixing for a yes. little bit. But don't let it over there. Yeah. That's right. Be super duper careful. Right? Oh, I'm making a vegetable casserole for Father's Day. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. I can't wait to take a picture. I'm going to make it at the beach. All right. Love it. Yeah, we're going to be in the San Diego on Father's Day. And I'm going to Austin Barnes. So, all right, we're going to let Austin Barnes. Really? Let's focus on how to teach us so that we can all hear it because we need to know how to do this. So, the next thing we're going to do after the eggs and sugar have been mixing for a little bit is we're going to add in the flour. And um, I have to put in a cup and three quarters of half and half. And you add it. Alternate it so you do some of the dry stuff, some of the liquid stuff, and you go back and forth as you add it. What is the tool that you just what is the tool that you have in your hand? Oh, I will show you in a moment. I'm talking about stand mixer. This is, no, 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 they want the, the greater. So I'm going to quickly say a few things here. Whenever you have like a lemon or a lime or an avocado or an orange or a grapefruit, you want to wash. It before you cut it because yeah, if there is some kind of bacteria on there and you yeah, cut it sure. right, the knife would go right, it yeah. would go right into the part that you're going to eat. So yeah. I had oh, washed this ahead. I just wanted to mention that. Very important. Yeah. 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 Um, and also, you guys know that, you know, before you start cooking, you wash your hands. In between, you wash your hands if you touch something. Yes. So any, you want to like, keep that up. Any meat, any yes. raw meat. Definitely. Oh, yeah, raw meat. Definitely. Wash, wash, wash. Imagine it's wrong. Not only yeah, just raw meat, but also like seafood. 
Any, any raw food that needs to be cooked in order to eat it or that you cook can have either bacteria or something. Yeah. Okay. Next so thing. this is a zester, right? And you can use it. Sometimes we use this at home to like grate yeah. Parmesan cheese and yeah. stuff. It gives you like a really fine grate on the Parmesan cheese. But we're going to use it on the lemon. And the idea behind zesting like a lemon or an orange or something like that, it's all about flavor, right? So you want to try to get the yellow part, but you don't want the white part underneath because that, that's a little bit bitter. So you try to just go over the surface lightly. And if you do it carefully, you'll see as I go, I'm not getting into the white stuff underneath, which is called the pit. Um, Such a so, you only want, so you only want the top part. You only want the top layer. And that's, that's another reason why it's really important to wash it really carefully because you know, anything on the surface of the lemon is going to end up in your food, right? So you got to make sure you're washing it super carefully. While he's doing that, I'm stopping this because it's mixing, and I'm going to add in two table or teaspoons. Two teaspoons. One thing with the bacon that is table is from a little extra is not very strict. No, I do love it. Is there such thing as too much vanilla? Too much garlic. Yeah. All right. Exactly. So two teaspoons of vanilla. Extract. I love vanilla. Right? Who, who loves vanilla here? Yeah, I, I think like it's a proud favorite. I like Vanilla ice cream and butter and chocolate ice cream. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, when I was a kid, peanut butter ice cream is really good. It is. But when I was a kid, I used to put vanilla extract in my milk. I was ahead of the steamers. Yeah. Then my Starbucks bottle would be like, where did it all go? So look, I just, okay, that's I, just, weird. I just zested the entire lemon and, and that's, all, that's all I got out of it, right? It's wow. not a ton of stuff, but that's like, there's a lot of flavor in that because the, the lemon peel is where the essential oils are that really gives lemon its smell and taste. So we're just going to put that directly here. Yep. Um, I'm going to interject here one more thing. So, you know, you know, I love to cook and bake and I always read cookbooks and I read blogs and all those. And there was an interview with a bunch of chefs asking, what is your favorite kitchen tool? And the microplane, which is what, what Eric's using, is was listed. And I literally went out the next day and bought one. They're fabulous. Um, and I use it for everything. You can also it bring chocolate. If you're good. making a good dessert, there's so many cool things. So I just I have to like say that. My beer is that apple butter. Oh, I put this. So the cherries, the cherries are coming back out. So if you look up here, see. Wow. Wow. Yeah, they're pitted. So the pits are all out. Fun. Fun kitchen tool we own. It's a lot easier to find frozen, already pitted, right? So you don't you have like, to go through and get the pits out of yourself. The fresh, the fresh the fresh are better. Good. I mean, the fresh are really good, but then you've got to use a, a cherry pitter and you've got to pop the, the pits out of the cherries. My mom does in front of the TV. She wants to do the cherry pitter. Oh, that's a cherry. I do have a cherry pitter. It's a balance, right? Like it's stuff made from scratch is delicious, but also it Labor takes more time. Minutes. So if this is all ready, and I'm gonna take so if you can see what the batter looks like, it's a little foamy. It's yeah. very liquidy. It's not thick like cake batter. It's very liquidy. That's intentional. And make sure it's stirred okay. really well and pour it over the top. I'm gonna to interject to say also this is a perfect example of something that you could make a substitution for. So if you are mm -hmm. dealing dairy intolerant like I am. I cannot have dairy, but you can now buy half and half that's made with coconut yes. milk yeah. or almond milk or oat milk. Dude, and you I can did, use milk dairy and non-dairy butter. It's dairy, it's dairy free. Dairy free. Dairy free. Dairy free. Most things. And they're really good options too. Like mm -hmm. you might even like adjust for the flavor. Yep. Don't feel that you couldn't have this. And there's also, you know, gluten-free flour I and mean, you could use almond flour or um, there, there's coconut flours, there's cassava flour. Cassava, I think it's called. So anyway, just wanted you to know that there are ways that you could make this if you if you cannot have dairy. So I put it in the oven. We do for half an hour. Oh, wow. First one hot and first cold. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, that's cold. Cool. 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 Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Okay. okay, so we just this happens all the time, right? I mean, how many times do I say? I mean, even today, I had a few a few little mishaps. 
So we just had a little spill. So if that ever happens to you, make sure you never use your bare hands. Yes. You use, uh, you have you a man, or if there's someone else that's with you, you can have maybe see if they can help you clean it up. Yeah. Just, uh, like, like, like a staff person. If you have a staff person or a friend or a parent or a At sibling. Home, it's my dogs that help with it. Well, yeah. 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 Everything yeah. I drop, it's gone. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. Yeah. Annoying ones. No. <laughs> We have one that's uh she, we don't even know what she is she's like a mutt and then we've got one that is a shih tzu bichon mix oh, who thinks cool. she's a great dane so she's about this big and she thinks she's about this big <laughs> my my sister has a dog yeah you're gonna start that my sister okay. has I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start cutting stuff up for the the pasta um so this is a, a recipe for pasta al forno um, which is a great, like, Fancy. quick pasta recipe, like, if you're trying to, you know, make a meal in about half an hour or so. Um, you do need, you can use either shallots or onions. Any of you ever cooked with shallots before? They're like little mini onions, right? So this is just a, a regular yellow onion we've cut in half. Now, I, there, I could very carefully, I cut off the ends on both sides. I could very carefully take all of the skin off, but I'm, I, I like the quick version. So, um, and then we just need to slice it thinly. So uh, this is a great opportunity to look about some knife skills. And so I'm just going to try and move this. Do we, ha do we have other people online? Oh, there's no one online? Oh. Well, now we're recording this for posterity. So, but I want you to listen and, and watch what he's doing here because it's really important when using knives, especially when you're cutting something that could possibly be slippery, that you really understand the knife work that you need to do and that you're safe when you're doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I always, you know, this was, I was a Boy Scout. You're learning in the Boy Scouts. You always keep a knife facing away from Yeah, me. I know what you're talking about. All that I stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Right? So, you know, you know, you got your totem chip. Always the knife never faces anybody. Um, onions can be a little bit slippery. So I like to work a little bit slowly with them. Um, but the way I cut just to help balance it out is I take yeah. my hand like this. And what I do is I rest the side of the knife against it as a little bit of a guide. So my fingers are helping to hold what it is, but then I have my, like the, the knuckle there is like the guide for the knife, right? Like it, like, and then I just break like it. Like it, like it Yeah, but you don't want to get your, you don't want to get, you your, don't finger. Want to get your fingers. Right, okay. so that's, that's why it like bends away like that, right? Like it so. Yeah, like a claw, that's mm -hmm. right. right. Or telling. The other thing is, and this is really important when you're working with knives, if people cut themselves when they're using dull knives because dull knives slip, they don't cut very well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you got to use sharp knives. But you don't want it too sharp. Sometimes I'll use a fork to hold the. Yeah, you use the prong. Because my right hand is not or it's oil to my left. I cannot do that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of adaptations for cutting stuff. Um, the other thing is like a lot of stuff that's hard to cut, you can just find pre-cut, like garlic, for example. Right. Garlic's hard to cut up by hand, but you can go to the store and you get these jars of pre-cut garlic. Yeah. yeah. Butter butter you do mix I, garlic. Further, I do want to say, I love that this is so um, interactive, but I do want to be mindful of just trying to at least you know, you wait until you have an opportunity to talk before like everyone's talking over each other because it makes it so hard when you're up here trying to, to say what you want to say. But I am curious if anyone remembers the last cooking class, I gave you a tip about garlic. Who remembers my tip and trick about garlic? Kelly. Peel, peel, like peel skin off of it? Yes, mm -hmm. but do you remember I told you there's another way? And basically what Eric just said about you can buy things pre-made yes. sometimes. Mm -hmm. Does anyone remember the, the way that you can also buy garlic that's really helpful? Okay. Garlic? Yes. Have you ever seen this pack? It's called D O R O T. I don't know if it's Doro or whatever, but it is. Oh, let me get your pan. Um, you can buy it frozen. It comes all minced, and you just pop it out and use it. And it's so much easier. Hi, come on. Wait, don't pull that one. That's a sample. No. <laughs> so these are uh this is these are just a few button mushrooms um they've already been washed and clean you always want to wash and clean mushrooms because they grow them in dirt so sometimes when you oh, get them yeah. they have dirt on them so you want to wash them off you don't want to like dunk them in water because they'll soak up the water so you just rinse them quickly um there's you know you can cook mushrooms with the the bottoms here still on but it's easier sometimes just to uh, pop my, them out right my and, dad mostly cooked 
Hey, it's a elephant. My mom. Yeah. Is between. We trade off, Dawn and I trade off cooking because we're both, we both have very busy jobs. So sometimes she's home and she can cook and sometimes I'm home and I can cook. I will tell you, she is a much better baker than I am, which is why she just made a foodie because I can make bread, but desserts, not so much. So I'm just slicing, you know, roughly the, the mushroom. I like to cut everything up before I start cooking. That way I can just, you know, I don't have to worry about going back and forth between the cutting board and what I'm making. It's less chaotic. Yes, like. it is much less chaotic. Yeah. It's Why is um, Tim's like the uh, the mushrooms in Moscow like the dried mushrooms? Oh yeah. And, you put in water and, it, and it rehydrates. It yeah. Rehydrates them. And Dry? that's you know a lot of places you can't get. So these are just button mushrooms. You can get these almost anywhere. Oh yeah. Yep. But they a lot of places them. like if you're cooking with fancy mushrooms, you have to use the dried mushrooms because the fancy mushrooms are hard to find fresh. Yeah, you can also buy just pre-sliced mushrooms if you go to the grocery store. They'll often have them there. You know, Eric, you missed a good event this morning. What did yeah, I miss? Coffee with the it was coffee with the cops. Yeah. Um <laughs> here's, here's what happens. Here's what happens at Thanksgiving every year. We plan a meal. Got all the things planned out. And then this one decides there's not enough food. So she adds like four more dishes. <laughs> and, and we're going crazy trying to get everything cooked before everyone gets there. At some point, she kicks me out of the kitchen because I'm just getting in the way. <laughs> you might just write me to your house, but you then. So one of the things. I'm gonna do while he's still chopping is to go ahead and put the pasta in the pot. You have to pre-cook your pasta before you put it in the casserole. So um, oh, that's you cook it for it says for 11 minutes. You actually probably cook it right at 11. Don't let it go over because since you're gonna bake it too, it's gonna get a little extra cooking when it's in the casserole. so if you cook it till it's really soft and then you put it in again hey. to bake. It'll get like super soft, and you don't want that. You want to wait. It'll uh, really be rough. Like, yeah, yeah exactly. right. Um, and I will tell you that in this case, for example, I pre, I put some water in a pot with some right. salt and got it warming while we were doing. I put it on. Um, so that way, you know, you're not don't have to then wait for the water to heat up, especially with the bigger pot. So that's one. And I think we talked about. I think Nick, it was you and I said today that the hardest part about cooking is timing. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. So, so that is something to keep in mind. That's why Thanksgiving so over the top. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and not just Thanksgiving, yeah, but also yeah, Christmas, Christmas too. too. Christmas too. too. Because please call it by each one holiday. And, and one yeah. last thing I just want to say, you guys, um, the mushrooms. So I don't know if you often work with fresh mushrooms, but there's a little stem in the bottom. Mm -hmm. And oh, they're yeah. so easy. If you just gently like push on the stem, you'll hear it like break off a little and it usually cleanly comes out. And you can clean your mushrooms two ways. You can wash them and you can dry them really well. Or there's a camp that basically yeah. people suggest yeah. that you wipe it off really well with a towel because when you put water on it, it gets a little bit of like a gummier consistency. Well, and it's fun when you're cooking. Like yeah, it's fun when you're cooking, but if you were using the fresh, you might want to think about that. So I'm always trying to give you, you know, suggestions that makes you have a Okay, another sorry. mushroom that showed up. I stole a mushroom. I, I thought I was done. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a favorite type of mushroom? Favorite type of mushroom? I, I love portobello mushrooms. Yeah, mushrooms. They are delicious. And there's one I use called an oyster mushroom. Oh, yeah. Honey looking. They're just real funny looking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> also, the yeah. keen oyster mushrooms as well. And I, I, I use them. In a salmon recipe, you actually Ooh. put olive oil on the pan. You put the mushrooms on the pan, like one mushroom per piece of salmon, and you Ooh. flip the salmon so that it's face down and the skin is up. And you bake it, and then you take your spatula, and that mushroom will be stuck to the top of it when you flip it over. And then there's like what's called a compound butter that you make in advance. 
wine and shallots oh, oh my god put that on the top Amazing. and it's right. stout. Are you making it hungry now? <laughs> so that's the idea so i'm gonna i'm gonna put the onions in when i'm at home when i do this where i like cut a bunch of stuff up i'll put it in bowls so i have a bunch of separate bowls with the stuff because then it's just easier to work with yeah but you, then you don't have to work with you don't have to like keep going back and cutting it yeah i got a bunch of small bowls i use just for that purpose you could never have too many of the little mixing bowls. I wish I didn't work. Uh, much but before my dad cook, he get the ingredients out before. Mm -hmm. Put them in each Makes it a lot easier. Before, before he. Yeah. So this. Prepping makes it everything the mushrooms are great, onions are great, the peas we're gonna add are, is great, but this is where all the flavor in this pasta comes from. Ooh. This is called prosciutto. It's Italian, it's an Italian. It's Italian, yeah. right? It's, it's for me, it's prosciutto yeah. de Parma, because it comes from a town named Parma, which is also where Parmesan cheese comes from. Really? <laughs> but the, 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 it's, a, it's a dried, it's basically a dried ham, and the fat in it is like really flavorful, and it's also super salty. So there's a huge amount of flavor in it. So you don't need to use a ton when you're cooking with it because it has so much flavor to it. And I'm just slicing it up thin. <laughs> It's already it's already It is. I'm just like uh, tiny pieces. Right. So yeah. it'll spread throughout your you're gonna eat. So just so you know you're gonna get a big chunk <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Question. Because it's already cured, so it's um it's not raw, oh. right? Um, but if you take yeah. it in this form what? and add what? heat, it renders what? out some of the fat and, and changes the, the flavor That's profile. Fine. Also, any of you like like sweet and salty foods at the same time oh, yeah so one of the best things you can have just as a quick snack is you take some prosciutto and you take some cantaloupe melon yes, and you wrap yeah. the piece of prosciutto around the melon and eat the prosciutto with the melon it is out of this world delicious it's yeah. fantastic thank you very much um and i'll also mention when we're always trying to think of new new things we can do a bake with sharon is i i do think because i do love to entertain and have people over and so it, this is making me think with some of this that we should, I know we did a charcuterie class once, but we should come up with like an appetizer day where we bake a bunch of different things. I agree. And then you could add things like the cantaloupe and the prosciutto. You did a charcuterie class? Yeah. You did? <laughs> did you invite me? I'll go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. If we get less more to come, we should make like make a make him do charcuterie. Yeah. 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 Governor Moore is that um, we just had a very cool class here at Main Street about learning how to be a reporter, right? Yeah. And well, then in yeah. the end, after you learned all the skills, who did you interview? Elfridge. Yes. Um, uh, Mark. Thank you. Mark Elfridge. Mark Elfridge. Yeah. Oh, so I, 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 I know the executive. Yeah. I went to Capitol Hill today. Spoke with a bunch of Congress. Yeah. Nice. So it's just really cool. There's some really cool things that we're doing. So. Um, the tip about onions when you cook onions, just one quick second. You know, they start up very white and like opaque, like you can't see through them. But then when you cook it, it really starts to caramelize and and again it kind of renders out, it becomes more translucent. And, and it makes you cry. And it does make you when cry. you're hot on it, sure. Yeah. 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 Ogres have they that's right. Go Shrek. Oh, your favorite food? I don't know what his favorite food is. Oh, I know he. I know he West doesn't. West yeah, you were asking Westmore, right? You were asking what? Yeah, I don't know. Um, he he's a very happy guy, so he likes. Yeah. Food. So I do know he does not like beets. Really? He doesn't like beets, I'm told. I've never witnessed this myself. No, not It's hard to hide beets. No, well, you well, yeah. like I made a chocolate cake with it. It was you delicious. Um, yeah. But what is your favorite food? Um, your that's favorite what, that's like asking me to pick between my children. Like, <laughs> I don't I I uh there are certain foods that you know food brings back memories, right? Yeah. And yeah. for me, 
the food that brings back the most memories. My grandmother was from Hungary. And when I was a kid, she would make um, chicken paprikash, which is like a classic Central European meal. She would make um, these little German dumplings called spetzle, or sometimes she would make bigger ones called nukgeum. And then, um, and then she would make this this wow. dessert. Wow. And and growing up, this Dawn's laughing because it's a funny story. <laughs> Every single birthday I had, I had this same cake because I loved it so much. Every year they said, what do you want? I said, I want mock Mahone because this was a cake that my grandmother made. Um, and when I became an adult, I started looking for a recipe for it and I couldn't find it anywhere. I tried every spelling I could think of of what mock Mahone was. It turns out she was making a cake called McMahon cake. But then the recipe she had was an incorrect recipe and she was actually making Molotov cake. So Dawn managed to find the recipe for this cake that I'd been hunting for for like 20 years. I want to be clear, I do not speak Hungarian or German. Was this really was quite an adventure. Yeah. They Maybe. will translate because the recipes are all in German or in German. Why is it called Mekanke? It's, it's, it's actually not, it's called Malakoff Tort. It Malakoff Tort is the actual name of it. She was calling it by the wrong name. <laughs> and on top of that, mispronouncing it. The wrong name. So we added the prosciutto. We're going to let that cook for about two minutes and then we're going to add the mushrooms. And you want to mushrooms Actually, take this out and then you yeah. Mushrooms, you have to be really careful with when you cook because they're very easy to burn and they cook like super quickly. And the other thing that happens is there's there's like moisture in that, there's water in that. So it cooks down and it'll release some of the moisture into whatever you're cooking. So while, while he's gonna be focusing on mushrooms and peas and getting the rest of that done, um, there is a bit of a sauce that gets mixed in with all these parts, with all the vegetables and with the pasta. And you make it with flour and butter and milk. So we have, yeah, we have a little pot over here ready to go. And we're gonna have four tablespoons of butter, which is right here. Um, and I think you know this already, but you, if you've ever noticed on the sticks of butter that there are numbers and lines on it. Yeah, it's it's, it's yeah. like, a, like, like the water. It's just like a ruler. That's after so then you the cut craft. what then you cut what you need. Everything is better with butter. That's <laughs> really, yeah. yeah. Can't yeah. go wrong with butter. Oh, and I did forget to tell you also that I could not. I went. I live right next to an Amazon Fresh store, and I gotta say I do not like the store at all. But I have no Why? choice because I, there are many reasons I don't like it. We could talk about it for mm -hmm. a very long time. But I went last night because I, I of course, didn't manage my time well. And there was no there was no shallots at all. Oh, sorry. So that's yeah. Oh, that's shallots. okay. We use what we have at home. Sometimes yeah. I have shallots, sometimes I don't. But I always have some other kind of onion, yellow or yeah. white, and they Thank can always you. substitute. Onions are shallots. pretty interchangeable, right? Yeah. I mean, like the yellow onions we use are used here are great. We cook a lot with white onions at home because they're they're sweet onions. You or may have seen them, you may have seen them called Vidalia onions. They're like really good. And then shallots. Shallots just, you know, shallots are really great for making like a salad dressing or something like that because they're smaller. Yeah, they have such a good roast them. Yeah, like fruit I mean, I, I can't eat any of that anymore. It's very sad. Yeah. The pasta is done. Oh, 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 okay. Well, we'll give it another minute or so. Oh, that's my problem. <laughs> See, you shouldn't let me in the kitchen at all. <laughs> um, so now, has anyone ever made a roux before? A roux. What? Yeah, it's R-O-U-F, right? It's a French it's word. Butter, no. flour, and your, your liquid usually milk, or, or you know, you can yeah. do it with broth too. Yeah, it depends on the recipe. But in this one, our liquid is gonna be milk. And um, so you melt the butter, which is what I'm doing now. I'm trying to spread it around and get it all liquidy. Then you're gonna add the flour in and use the whisk to like mix it into the butter. 
going to get all golden. And then you very slowly start adding all the milk in. And I think it's two cups. Yes. And I will get yep. mm -hmm. Brews are like, they're used in sauces a lot. They're also, if you've ever had gumbo, brew is like the base of gumbo. It's a type of soup. Yeah. My mom makes homemade made mac and cheese. She makes her, she makes her root. Oh yeah? Yeah. Homemade mac and cheese is one of my favorite things. Yeah, uh, it is. Yeah, she yes. makes her root for like the, for the sauce. And and um, you, you said the name of the sauce is Bechamel. Is that what you said? Bechamel. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and so in cooking, there are a few sauces, like they're, they're I forget what they're called, but it's like the, there's base sauces. Mm -hmm. And once you know how to make the sauces, you can make so many other things from that. And bechamel is one of them. Who would raise your hand if anyone's ever had um, fettuccine Alfredo? Oh, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. yeah white, that's creamy sauce. So I that's really bechamel like sauce. That's not sure. And so, like, for example, I make a lasagna at home. And when I make it, I use a bechamel sauce, I use a red sauce. Which has a base. It's called a mirepoix. Mm -hmm. It's three that ingredients: brings. onion, because we just talked about how how amazing the flavor of onion is, yeah. celery, and carrot. And you reduce that down, and then when you do it with the tomatoes, it really and then of course some garlic and onion and all of that makes a delicious red sauce. And then I just layer in between the, the lasagna that, and then some mozzarella cheese. And I took this off the heat just so I could show oh, you what it out. looks like wow. once the flour gets in the butter before I start putting the milk in it. Yeah. And you do want to cook that for a couple of minutes because otherwise it'll taste floury. You yeah. have to like, bake, you know, kind of cook out uh, that. It's got to get all the butter. And you want to be careful so it doesn't Yes, yeah. you have to keep an eye on it and, and really that's why you don't turn that's time. why you never turn away from your cooking. I mean, who should be teaching this class, Sam? You've got like it all yeah. uh, you got it going on. Yeah. Yeah. Um okay, we're rocking and rolling here. Yeah. Eric got it much yeah. I don't know if you saw, I don't know if you saw, but Eric took the um onions and the um the, oh, yeah, it's all, yeah, it's all the um prosciutto off. And we're gonna put that back in with so there's like a lot of steps to this recipe. I threw the mushrooms in to cook. Yeah. So what we're going to do once in eight or 10 minutes, once the mushrooms are cooked down, is we're going to add back in the onions and prosciutto and the peas. Um, and we'll have all of our stuff back together. Um, and then eventually we'll add that to the bechamel sauce. A lot of steps. To this a lot of steps to this recipe. But that's okay because we're breaking it down for you. And the nice thing is you, you're watching us do it. So next time when you go to make it on your own, you'll remember kind of what this looked like. Yes, yeah, just um. So, are there multiple ways you can make this? Sure. Like what? Like what other sauces or, or like, uh, what kind of are, are that? What other eggs would you use? So, I mean, a recipe like this, you you can vary as much as you want, right? Okay. If you don't like mushrooms, it I wouldn't be. So it, but a lot of people don't. <laughs> if, if you don't like mushrooms, you could switch out for a different vegetable, right? I make a very similar pasta in the uh, spring okay. using peas also oh, yeah. and baby carrots and some other spring vegetables, right? And yeah. that's that's called a pasta primavera. Primavera means spring yeah. in Italian. Um, so you can just vary as much as you want once you learn a few basic sauces. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, great question, by the way. Right, sure. That is something, as we know, with all cooking, we, if there's, you, know, you can swap out like we did with the evening and next day. Well, I have a question. Yeah, you can't have cold milk, but you could do milk. oat milk, you could do almond milk, you could do coconut. Well, I wouldn't do coconut milk because that's a little sweeter. You could and by the un, right, the, uh, the, the un sweet. Yeah, by and the un flavor. Un -flavor. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've got an oat milk. You could do no, oat milk with unsweet. Yes. Okay. Did you make anything more sweet? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. Pasta al forno is the name of the pasta recipe. And the dessert that's in the oven right now cooking is called a, a, a cherry clafouti. The one is French, the oh, one is Italian. Italian. We're doing like global cooking here. We've got oh, French and Italian all in one place. So an Italian pasta dish and a French dessert. Where did the name, that's quite the name of it. Where did the name clafouti come from? Where did the name clafouti come from? It's a French word. I don't know what it means. I don't know, but our kids think it's the funniest. <laughs> it's it is, it is a funny name. And, and um, Megan, what did you just ask? Are you guys an Italian? Oh, right. Ah, so I was adopted when I was a month old. Um, so 
you know, ethnically, I'm Irish, Scottish, English, Welsh. Oh, wow. Thank you, 23 and me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I was adopted by an Italian family. And so a lot of things I grew up eating and loving and learning how to cook were Italian. Because uh, my father's me, family is Italian. And I am Italian. Italian. My, my last name growing up was oh, Lanzalotti. Lanzalotti. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Pretty My family is uh, a little bit, a significant amount of German and Hungarian, and then a little bit of French and English. But my mom was the one who taught me how to cook, and she grew up watching a famous TV chef named Julia Child. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So she she learned how to cook, you know, French food, and that's kind of how I learned to cook was from her and and the kind of like basic French cooking, which is what we're doing here, you know, the this style of cooking, French Italian cooking is pretty similar in a lot of ways. I, I forget which museum it is, but her um okay. her I'm sorry. What kind of chocolate? Oh, yeah, yeah. Chocolate cake too, right? They're both, yeah. So he doesn't like coconut. And there's oh, coconut in your uh, chocolate. I, however, love coconut. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, that's um, all right. So let's let's bring this together because I know that there's a lot going on here. It's so easy. But let's, this is our next step. So, um, we had a little mistake where the heat got turned down a little low and the water stopped boiling, which meant we had to put the pasta a little longer, which is why I just tasted it to make sure it was the right, like it, it wasn't too soft or too hard. Um, and I'm going to take it over and we have our little colander here. I mean, drain it. Right? Yeah. I'm going to drain the pasta. Because my parents, oh, my mom drained. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to really small colander yeah. to be using. For yeah, you play how you had big one. Yeah, that colander is tiny. So I'm going to use the lid. To yeah. the yeah. um, I will say also just to leave you a tip about when you know your pasta is al dente, no. that if you take a piece out very carefully, bite into it, and there is a little teeny thin white line. That's how you know it's al dente. Oh. And there's like a tiny little bit of extra chew in there. Oh, yeah. Um, but you never want to pour. You never want oh. 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 We just had a little spill. But just so you know, there's the five steps of course. <laughs> I, I also that this happens in the kitchen and that's why I know for me this day has been very topsy-turvy for me and I, I had all kinds of things like not happen the way I did. so I've kind of been off all day and when you're cooking you do need to be careful and you really need to kind of like when I was trying to cook and do a tour at the same time and prepare everything <laughs> and clean up at the same time and I literally like went to touch the pot and it was still hot and I literally had, I just did this and I like took a deep breath and I reminded myself that like, I needed to slow down. I don't, I don't scream like a girl, a little girl. Okay, well that's uh, hard. Uh, but yes, you don't want to get to a point where you, that you really lose your cool. So just a reminder to everyone, we all have those days and it's okay. But just when you're cooking, you really want to kind of just slow down when you know that you're at a point where you're like, might make a mistake and, or hurt yourself. So you just want to kind of take care of that into consideration. Here's the thing about the TV cooking shows is when they make a mistake, they just don't put it on TV. They just put it out. He just put it out. When somebody burns himself or he doesn't. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, the mushrooms are done. I'm going to take the onions and prosciutto that we already cooked and put it back in the pan. Same thing. Why do you put it back in the pan? Because um, you want to. It's hard to cook mushrooms when they're in with something else if you're trying to render the moisture. Uh, okay. So that's why they have you take it out, and then you need a little bit of the um, little bit of peas, like a cup of peas from the bag, and put them back into the pan with everything else. Okay. Um, two two tips and tricks. One. Um, I've read in a couple of different places that you can also cook mushrooms 
in a pan with no oil mm -hmm. and wow. the, the natural oils of the mushroom will start to render out and you know they shrink up a lot like that and spinach and kale when you cook it it just really shrinks up and then that gets a little more flavor out of the mushroom and then you can add your olive oil okay. so that's one tip and trick and the other tip and trick is um something that i'm forgetting I, I already forget what I was going to say, but that one was good enough. So we'll just with the pasta. Don't come back. Yeah. We're just going to mix it all yeah, in. Yeah, that's a better idea. Yeah. No, use the pot itself. We'll just pour everything in there and pour everything in with the pasta. That's what I was trying to do. Yeah. Oh, oh, see, see look at you. Very, very funny. You know, just realized that we, did we forget the, um, they have, we did, they have, I did that. Mm -hmm. I put it away. There you go. The other trick you can do with pasta, sure. right? If pasta was, like pastas, different people like pasta being harder or softer. Oh yeah, my, right? I like it harder. Right. But the first trick I ever learned for knowing when pasta was al dente, so it was like you know still a little yeah, chewy yeah. but not super soft, was when taking a piece of it, throwing yeah. it against the refrigerator and seeing if it sticks. Yeah. Really? Yeah. We, we, we don't do that at home. She doesn't do it. I do it at home, but. Not when she's around. <laughs> okay. All right. So Sarah, we've we got, got, oh, we got this ready. Oh, we got this ready. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll, tell yeah. Them, tell, well, we'll tell them our tip after. So, this is all ready to go. I'm going to put that in with the pasta. And grab the sauce part. Sauce That's is all. That's the dessert. That's the bechamel. Dessert. Dessert. Yeah. Dun, 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 and then dun, you're going to take, when, after he gets that in there, mix it up with the pasta, you're going to take some of this and mix it in and then sprinkle some on the top so you get it in the pan. And Um, I was also going to say that our tip and trick is that whenever you open any food item that you're saving, make sure you carefully close it. Put the date on it, and, and that way you know what it, most foods like go spoil. They spoil in um, seven to ten days. So you, if, even if the date on the package says something yeah. else, you want to go by the date you write on here, and seven to ten days from that date, generally speaking. Right. And if you're questioning it, Google it. Yes. So when you say Oh, you put the date that I put today's date. Today's date. So, or date that you made it on. Yeah. No, or, or date, date that you opened it. Yeah. So here, I wrote on the little cap 6-12-23, because that's when. That's when you got it. So that's when I opened it. I have to open. Oh. And the date where it says it says Best Buy July 15th. But Wait. I'm not going to leave this till July 15th because I opened it on 6 Once it's open, it goes bad faster. So, yeah. Oh, so yeah. then we're going to sprinkle some of the Parmesan on top before we put it oh, in the oven. oven. <laughs> I got this. Dad. I love Parmesan. Yeah. I used to own a book called The World Encyclopedia of Cheeses. <laughs> <laughs> I they, eat they for real. That's his third from California. that in. And then it's ready to go in the oven. Oh, well, there's here. Wait, wait. I've got the butter on the top. Oh, there's butter on the top? Yeah. Why do you put butter? I have been because butter, you can never have too much butter. Because there's no butter such thing as too much butter. It's fabulous. Yeah, this is not on the uh, super healthy foods recipe. Yeah. I'm just going to put this in. Okay. Yep. Are you checking to see if okay. it's done? What's that? Yeah. Oh, well, you know what I realized? I made the pasta dish first before everyone came so that we could taste it here. Oh yeah. And you know, when you let pasta sit for a little bit, it gets a little dried oh, up. Yeah, so yeah. I just tossed it a little bit and I put it back in the oven. So hopefully it'll be a little warmer and more delicious. And cooler. And yeah. And, and if you and if you and if you know you might want to have this like a different time yeah. that you could prep it beforehand up to the point I just did. And then and like the let's pizza. say you have company coming oh. over or you know friend coming over. You just pop it in the oven for 15 minutes before they come. Or if you're not going to eat it, you put it in the freezer? You could freeze it. You'd have to put the date on it. Put the date on it. Um, you have to defrost it, like let it oh, come yeah. to room temperature. You can't put the frozen one in the oven. So we just stick it in for 15 minutes and let it cook? Yep. 
and that's pasta al forno, and it's delicious. Here is the fun part. We're going to do a little, just shoot this to the side, and then we're going to get to taste both things. So I just put the um, the kofudia to warm up a little bit, and um, and then we will um, we'll, we'll get everything else out. I'm wondering if one of you can help with with that kind of thing. Not you, Justin. Actually, can help too. Yeah, and then and we'll take the cook and we'll just clear this area out, and I'm gonna put cups and plates, and we could start recording. So thank you. Which part of the question? Thank you. All right. Thanks for joining us. All right. So we'll just get out.